What up, what up, world? It's your boy, Pablo Rodriguez. Oh, yes. I'm here at the offices of Infinity Cash Offer, where today we will be doing the objection game round six. Done by your boy right here. All right? So after the intro, we'll get started. All right, guys, so check it out. Before we begin the objection game, objections is really about the mind, okay? It's you being able to think quick on your feet. Nine out of 10 times, the first resolution that comes to mind is gonna be the best resolution for you to speak to the seller, right? So prime example, I have, you know, a lot of people always trip up and say, hey, you know, uh, well, I just inherited this house and I don't know how to go about the process, right? Even if you don't know the legal ramifications of the process, hey, guess what? No problem. We can help you through that process. Because at the end of the day, maybe you yourself may not know, but you does, right? Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, never forget that you have someone who has a plethora of knowledge and information. So even if it's something that you may not know all the way through front to back, you can still say we can take care of you because you have someone who does, mm -hmm. all right? A lot of people won't utilize things like that because they're worried about, well, I don't know it. Just because you don't know all the information, don't let that hold you back or don't let that hold you, uh, stop you from letting the seller know, hey, we can take care of you. Hey, uh, I'm in a situation where we have liens against us. I don't know squat about liens. No problem, we can help you. At the end of the day, it's always about remembering that we're providing the service. If you remember that at the end of the day, you're providing a service to them, then you, you make it your mission to service them. So whatever their problem is, just set in your mind, I'm going to help them. We are problem solvers. So whatever their problem is, automatically the answer is, don't worry, we can help you. Oh, I don't have money to move until after the closing. Don't worry, we can help you. We can get you moved out beforehand. Not an issue. Just think quick on your feet, all right? So, my man Luis, we're gonna get started with you, brother. All right, all right. Listen, I like the offer that you're giving me, but here's the problem. I don't have a computer. I can't sign any paperwork online. I completely understand, man. I know a bunch of people who I've had to go to their house, man. That's not a problem for me. I can meet you at your house at Starbucks. We can get some coffee and you know, talk about it some more. We can get it signed on paper, man. Well, I, I, I'm cool with, the, uh, with, 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 with meeting up with you, right? But now here's my, here's my question, right? Are you going to be able to walk me through so I can understand what I'm signing? Because I don't want to get played. Yeah, no, 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 I completely understand, man. Look, I'll go line by line. We can read it together. I'll explain the whole thing to you so you can understand it completely. Good job. All right, Charles. All right, well, listen, we are accepting offers on the house. If you're interested, submit an offer to my agent. Well, I feel like regardless, I'm going to buy the property. I mean, do you have a number in mind that you're hoping to get? You know, I, I'd hate to be one of 15 people trying to make an offer and get buried in the noise. Well, you know, the thing is, Charles, that uh, I, I, I want, I have a friend, they're, they're the agent, right? And I just want to make sure that they're, they're helping me to make sure that I don't get screwed over by anybody. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I prefer if you, you submit an offer through them. I have no problem submitting an offer through them. Is there anything that you have on the table right now under contract or are you still accepting offers? Well, I've had a few people, you know, shoot me a couple numbers, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's not quite what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But like I said, uh, we're gonna take the best offer. So, you know, just... I'll tell you what, I'd, uh, I'd love to submit an offer, but we typically don't deal with agents here. It just creates a lot more paperwork than is necessary. Is there any chance I can get you and your friend uh, on the phone and maybe we can work something out between the three of us? I wanna get you the best price and you paying him will not get you the best price. Maybe I could pay him a referral fee and we can do something cash. There's different options on the table. Maybe you're, you're overlooking something here. Okay, now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interject. You're going along the right path, right? Yeah. I've been in that situation where someone's very insistent about an agent. Okay. Whenever someone's pointing to an agent, what, let me ask you something, guys, before I, I'm going to provide you with the answer. What do you think is going on in a person's head when they're insisting upon an agent? Because take, in, take, into, take into consideration what I told Charles, right? It's my friend that's an agent, okay? Mm -hmm. So... And I just want to make sure I'm not getting screwed over. So they're what's really going through this person? They're scared? What do you think? Nervous. And experience? Yeah, because like, they don't know what to have. His friend would have his best interest in mind. Okay. Probably don't know much about what he's doing. Right. You're all right. 
But now here's how I deal with that situation. Because see, it's worried up, it's them being worried about getting screwed over, but it's also them worried about you. They lack confidence in you. So what's one way you can always make a person instantly gain confidence in you? Money talks, bullshit walks. You get me? Hey, listen, I understand completely that you, you know, you have your friend with you and they're trying to make sure you don't get scammed. But look, I get it, you're taking offers, but I just want to know what your number is. What's the number right now that'll get you to sign on the dotted line? Let's forget about all the offers, right? We can sit here and, and wait and play that game, or you can deal with me, the person who can give you what you need right now. Mm -hmm. If your number is good enough for me, then we can go. So tell me what your number is. See, that's how you get them to tell you a number or you get them to accept your offer. Now, the second part of that is this, the offer aspect where you can eliminate everybody else. Hey, look, I'm, I'm ready to put earnest money down today. Let's get, let's, let's, let's get a deal on price. You don't have to worry about anybody else because I can close you the fastest. I'm not gonna come back and waste your time. Let's get a number today, let's put it on paper. And then you don't have to worry about showing your house Worry about your, your, your friend uh, having to meet everybody and go through that whole process. Let's just get it done. So you got to create uh, urgency. urgency, exactly. Create a sense of urgency. Create, create a sense of you being a boss. You see what I'm saying? A boss, me or Q, when we go deal with people, the reason why we're so successful is because we push to, to, for them to understand, hey, you're dealing with the end buyer right now. You don't have to deal with somebody who's going through a food chain to get you an offer. Let's get it done now. You have to take the position of a boss. You have to take that position. You guys aren't workers. You guys are buyers. When you have that confidence in you as a buyer, it's amazing how it conveys to the seller because then it's like a whole shift in the attitude, a whole shift in the demeanor. Like, oh, wait, now I'm dealing with somebody who can get it done. Finally. Okay? Use that to your advantage. Don't, it, you were going with the soft approach, it's good, but it'll also get you spun around a lot. If you wanna get to the meat and potatoes and, and serve dinner, right? Hey, listen, what's your number? Let's get it done. What do you want? If it's realistic and I can do it, it's a done deal. But if it's unrealistic, let's, let, let's work on getting the both of us in the middle ground of reality so we can close it out. And you'll find that people are like, oh wow, okay, this man's sure of himself. He's serious. Oh, I finally got someone who wants to get it done. Mm -hmm. Now you'll notice a shift in them, okay? All right. My man, Jose. Mm -hmm. Man, there's squatters in the house right now. There's squatters in the house right now. How long have the squatters been staying there, if you don't mind me asking? <sighs> Too long for me to remember, man. I, I feel like they took over. <laughs> you feel like they took over? I mean, well, th that's not a problem. We deal with squatters all the time. Uh, we had to go through this process. Too many times to count. Um, if you want, let me let me see the situation, and you know maybe I can help you out with that. Okay, not bad. Going in the right direction, right? People have squatters, and they're not even going to the house or really wanting to deal with that because squatters are dangerous. I've me, Q, Garrett, we've run up on some squatters. Uh, so it's a dangerous situation, and for sellers especially who you know may not want to be be wanting to deal with that. So. Another way you can go at them is, hey, you know what? Why don't you let me take care of those squatters for you? Yes. Hey, I'm not worried about squatters. I don't mind going to see the house. If anything, I'll probably be able to run those squatters up out of there for you if you let me go see the house. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, put your cape on, be a hero. Put the Enrique Iglesias on in the background and run it. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. All right, look. Jay Money. Hmm. <clears throat> I feel like I gotta get something special for you because with a name like that, I just feel like I have to, I have to, I have to bring it. You know what I mean? I have to, I have to challenge it. Are you those people who give low offers on people's houses? Not at all, man. Look, uh, my company, we just need to make sure that the investment is, it makes sense. You know, I, I would love to get you what you're asking for. What would you need to walk away happy with this? Well, I mean, for me to walk away happy, to be honest with you, you know, we've put a lot of time into the house, you know, uh, a lot of work rather, 
uh, you know, there's a lot of memories there, and we know it may not be as important to other people, but you know, it means something to us. So I. I just don't want to get lowballed, man. I don't want to get shot in the foot and, 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 and get told some crazy low price for my house and, and end up with nothing. You know what I mean? So I, that's why I really wasn't wanting to talk to you guys. I understand, man. I understand 100%. You know, honestly, memories are worth more. You know, you can't put a price on memories, man. So I understand that 100%. Uh, for me to be able to meet you where you would like, Maybe I can go by and check it out. You know, my price does depend on the condition. So, I mean, if I can see what updates you've done, if there's no major damages, then I could get you what you're asking for, man. So, I mean, you know, if, if you can give me some information, maybe I can go see it firsthand. We could work better with that way, man, honestly. Good job. That was fire right there. He took he, he took what I said. He acknowledged it. You know what I'm saying? He uh, I forgot what the I means. I always forget that. <laughs> Ignored that. <laughs> he acknowledged it. He immediately put it into play with as far as like, look, look I, I know you're worried about low ball offer. And then he put the carrot. That's what I call it. He dangled the carrot on the stick and said, hey, let us see it, which is getting him in the door. Right. And we might could get to where you're at. That's the carrot on the stick. Mm -hmm. That great job. Yeah, you want to Joey. Sure. Joey been here for a while. Hmm. We have a friend who's an investor that wants to make us an offer on the house as well. Okay, okay, I understand. Well, I mean, I don't want to be competing, giving offers out, but if you let me, I'd like to come see the property, uh, know what I'm putting my money into, and I'd like to give you as much as I could for it. Well, I mean, couldn't you give me an offer right now over the phone? Yeah, yeah, of course. I can give you one over the phone. I mean, break it down to me. What's the property looking like? Well, you know, uh, Property has, it needs, needs foundation, uh, roof's brand new, just got it about a year ago. Uh, plumbing's a little funny. Uh, you gotta kick the water heater two times to get it to turn on. Uh, and then you got, uh, we, we, we've had some electrical issues cause you know my Theo, he, he, he was doing some stuff upstairs but we're not gonna get into that. But you know, I mean, we're, you know, we're just, we're, we, we want offers, you know, we want, we, we'd like to get an offer, man. We got our friend, uh, they're they're gonna give us an offer too, you know. So, you know, before we go go out there, cause it's like a it's like a forty minute drive to the house, man, for us to to see you. Uh, you know, what can what can you offer us? Okay, well, I mean, it sounds like it needs a whole lot of work, but uh, if your buddy's real serious about buying it and he wants to take a look, uh, go ahead and let him. And I can give you a call back after I run these numbers, let you know what I'd be willing to offer. But uh, before you make any final decisions, go ahead and give me a call back, and I'd like to at least come see it myself and know what I can do for you. Okay. All right. Well, you know, uh, that'll that'll work. You know, uh, the, our friend he's supposed to he, he's supposed to give us an offer like in the next ten minutes, right? Um, so uh, if you if you could get if you could get back to us pretty quick, you know, you know what? Nah, that was kind of a wild one. <laughs> That's gonna get edited. Right, but you you went along you, you went along the right path. You were doing good, bro. Uh, where I, I messed up is because what I meant to do was try to, I wanted to put you in a situation where you you, you needed to uh, press to get them to do it now. You know what I mean? Like to, to switch the role. That, I fucked up on that one. <laughs> Let me give you another one. Here we go. Can I get money up front before closing? Uh, yeah, we, we could put some earnest money down. You'd have to get it at title. But uh, I'd like to come see the property, of course, if, if it's before closing. I'd like to see what I'm buying before I put anything on paper. What do you mean, earnest money? I I'm talking about, kid, could you guys are interested in buying my house. I mean, are you guys willing to give me something to show me that you're serious? Well, we would leave our money down at title. And then once it gets cleared, you get the money from the title company. Okay. So you'll write a check and it'll go and, and put it at title and... How do I know it's legit? Like, how do I know your check ain't gonna bounce? Oh, well, you can call the title company. We ran transactions through them before. You know, we're legit. We're a good company here. We've done a lot of business. Uh, you can give them a call and they can they can clarify for us. Good job. Good, good job. Yeah. You are the third person who's called me about this house today. Must have a good deal going or something. So why are you calling me? Well, I mean, if you're getting calls from multiple people, there's something going on. I mean, the reason I'm calling you is because I noticed that there's like 13000 in taxes owed and there's no exemptions on the property. Now, I mean, I know you're getting a bunch of calls, but has anyone ever tried to help you out with that? 
Nice. That was fire. Yeah. That was fire. Yeah. I thought I would have done that. <laughs> Good. Piss off. I get calls from people like you all the time. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Um, well, I'm just giving you a call to leave you an offer on the property. Yeah, I'm not trying to target you or nothing. We're just happen to be calling people in, in, the, in the area and uh, we just like to leave you an offer. Do you have a couple of minutes? Okay. I mean, I, I, I got time, but I don't want my time to be wasted. How do I know you're, what, what separates you from everybody else? Well, I'll be honest with you, I, I really can't compare myself to those guys, but I know for a fact I'm serious and, you know, I wouldn't be calling you today. I'm not in the business of wasting my time either if, uh, if I wasn't serious about purchasing your property. Not bad. You can compare yourself to those guys. Mm -hmm. All right? You want to compare yourself to those guys. Okay. The difference between me and everybody else is because I'm ready right now to go drop earnest money at title okay. and lock this and lock this in today. We can do a contract today. We don't have to wait for a realtor to draw it up. I can come see you, do it in front of you. I can email it to you through DocuSign. I'm serious. That's what se separates me from everybody else. I'm ready to move here right now. Okay. Are you ready? Turn it back on Exactly. Right. We want to wait until COVID is over before trying to sell the house. Damn, you got me right there. <laughs> that's, the uh, that's the first time everyone like, ever like, brought up COVID, COVID. Well, besides, you know, like, mm -hmm. going to sign, but that's the first time everyone, anyone's ever brought it up like that. COVID's over, how do you deal with that? All right. Is it, it's never going to be over. <laughs> so it, all right so that that's the first thought that came perfect example guys look look that's the first thought that came to your mind right yeah so he, yeah. all right i would have ran with that because if no bullshit I, I was gonna tell you hey flip rolls and ask me and i was gonna hit you hey look at the current rate of things COVID's never gonna be over right and so you'll be waiting forever for COVID to end so you can sell your house tell you what let me come over there with a mask gloves and some hand sanitizer so that way you know I'm good all right let me walk the house and give you my number right then and there and if my number works for you I'll t we can fill out a contract and I'll take an earnest money check down the title and we can get you closed out next week how's that sound take their fear and make a joke make it make a joke of it you know what I mean because that no bullshit hell at the current rate when is COVID gonna end you know what I mean let me give you another one <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Can you lend me money and I pay you back at closing? Well, if you want, we actually, uh, we can lend you some money right now, but at the end of closing, we just probably take it out of the proceeds. Okay, so I mean, yeah, that works. There's no, I can't really go on too much more on that. Yeah. That was yeah. good. I mean, we, we just got it out of the situation. Yeah, like we're like this lady. She she needed like three grand to yeah. pay off some debt. She's like, hey, I need three grand. Can y'all put? Uh, can y'all give me some money? You know, and then uh, you know we'll just we'll just settle that at closing. And she ended up canceling the contract right after she got the three grand. So I would have hit him with like, hey, we need to. We need to have some kind of contingency in place if, if we ended up not purchasing your property because you chose to back out just so you know we put like a lien on your property or you know let them know that we'll do it but you know we both got to be protected in this you know yeah. like I see how bad that situation can go real fast good deal good deal i like it all right let's see j money the city says they are gonna rip the property down in the next month. I'm just gonna let it go. Oh man, there's no need to let it go, man. If you could get some money off of it before all that happens, let's put some money in your pocket. Cause other than that, it's kind of just sitting there, just sitting there, you know, waiting for the city. So uh, what do you owe on the property? Or why are they saying that they're gonna tear it down? Well, it, it's cause the, basically we've, the house had a fire. We never did anything to it, left it neglected, and now it's gotten to the point where the city is saying they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna knock it down. So I mean, they're about to knock it down. I might as well just let it happen, dude. And 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 you know it it is what it is, you know. 
Gotcha. Well, look, man, uh, let me put some money in your pocket. Um, even if it's a couple dollars, a couple dollars is much better than you walking away with nothing, man. I'll worry about the city. I'll take care of these, you know, issues that are going on that they're worried about. I'll take care of that. Let me put some money in your pocket for the holidays, get you, you know, something extra for uh, for that property there, man. So you think you might be able to do something before the city goes to knock it down? Like, are you able to stop it before it happens? Yeah, man, we, we deal with this multiple times. I've had properties, you know, that we've closed out that same thing, cities come in and attacking them, attacking them on for every little thing, the grass. So let me, uh, you know, let me see what's going on with the property. Let me put some money in your pocket. If, uh, if it's okay with you, I can send this over to you right now. We can get this to the title, see what's going on. Let me get in touch with the city and let's get you paid, man. Good job, good job. Good job. <clears throat> man, Joey, someone offered me the same amount you did. Okay, okay, well, you know, I'm really confident in my numbers and I know what I offered I can perform on. So if you're planning on going with them, I mean, I'm not going to step on anyone's toes and say we're any better. But uh, I'd like you to really think about it, you know, sleep on it, and give me a call in the morning before you make any final decisions. Well, you know, I... I, I feel like, you know... No, stop. That, so, on that one, right? You're going around, you're going the right path, but take in mind, think about it. If, if... If someone gave you the same offer that he did, mm -hmm. right, and you got that offer first, what would you have done? Probably go with the one I got first. Exactly. Or what's the second thought? Mm -hmm. If you're if you're telling me, oh, he got the same offer, then what are they trying to do? Yeah, they, can, go they, they, they might be trying to jack the price up. So he did go right in, 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 in the first avenue of what he did was, well, hey, he stood his ground. Well, hey, we're, I'm sure we can execute. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't take the bait and chase the rabbit and say, well, you know, well, maybe we can throw you a couple grand extra. Yeah. He stood his ground. So he did real good on that aspect. But I just wanted to give you another, another lane to also think about, too. Like, sometimes, like, for me, I've thrown it back at them. Well, hey, you know, uh, our offers stands if you want to take theirs instead cool like you said we're guaranteeing that we're going to execute yeah. uh we will be are, are they putting earnest money down that's a question i always ask mm -hmm. are they putting earnest money down because you'd be surprised a lot of competition mm -hmm. is putting ten dollars down yeah and while i love to put ten dollars down i will shit on somebody who's putting ten dollars down too <laughs> i'm not gonna lie i have it, it, it has worked I literally had a, a, a seller say, yeah, uh, such and such sent me a contract. And I say, well, cool. Uh, and they'll be like, their offer is a little bit higher than yours. I said, cool. Let me ask you something. How much earnest money are they putting down? Mm -hmm. Oh, they're putting down $10. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, hey, the reason why my number's where it's at is because I'm not going to come back and ask you later for a price reduction. Mm -hmm. And I'm willing to put 1% down so you know i'm serious with no option and then they'll be like oh right okay and literally i have a house that's closing today that i literally did that same maneuver on and, and, but we put a little bit more earnest money down we put like i think we put ten thousand down yeah. but it worked we got it for the number we wanted mm -hmm. you know what i mean so don't be afraid to leverage that but you're definitely you were thinking right but I just wanted to give you another idea, you know. Hey, for, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah but... Now, uh, let's see, who's next? Who's oh, man, hey, my man been killing today. I gotta find something. Okay, this would be this would be like his I guess you guys you guys have dealt with sub too, right? You guys are familiar with it? Alright, cool. Beautiful, beautiful. I got a deal the other day. Sub two type deal. Yeah. I'll run y'all down. I'll run it down here. Alright, so check this out. What are the benefits of me selling to you in payments, dude? Well, I mean, the thing is, you'll get what you want. It's not going to be a cash offer. It won't be fast, but you'll get the money that you want. I understand that, you know, most people that you've gotten offers for are like, Fifty, seventy-five thousand dollars lower. I'm willing to give you, give you what you want, but I just need the time. Okay. Well, how much time are you talking about? Like, I mean, are we are we talking about basically 
uh, you basically having a, a mortgage with me? Is this going to be 20 years for me to get paid? No, 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 definitely not. I mean, I'd, I'd love to go that route because that is good for me. But, I mean, if you're wanting it as quick as possible, I can do it in as fast as five years. Okay. Good one. <clears throat> you ready for this? I know it's a helmet. Dude, the person you're calling for died last week. Have you no fucking remorse? No, I do have remorse, man. My condolences. Uh, I can't imagine what you guys are going through right now with uh, all the stress of, you know, dealing with a lost loved one and handling the estate. I'm just here to, you know, um, help you guys out through that situation whenever you're ready. Um, do you have an address? Maybe I can send you some flowers. Maybe I can, you know, do something like that so that you, know, you guys remember me and, you know, for whenever you guys are ready to make this decision. Make a decision? Man, we're, we're trying to figure out where we're going to bury them. And you're talking about making a decision about a house? And you think sending me some flowers is going to make it cool? No, I don't. That's not at all. That's me being sincere with sending you flowers, man. I, I just lost a loved one not too long ago. I understand exactly what you're going through. But I also understand that <clears throat> there are situations that you do have to deal with eventually. Um, like I said, just give me a call whenever you're ready. And uh, we, we can take things from there. All right, not bad. Here's what I've done in that situation. Cause I really dealt with like a whole probate issue a couple years ago, okay, and, yeah, let me know, I'm and, right and I had called them. Uh, and I mean, when I tell you the person had literally just died, like I I called, <laughs> I called, bro, and and they were doing the viewing. Oh, shit, <laughs> it was it was so messed up, right? But literally, what I did was. Because they opened the door for me. They said, how the hell did you get our information? Mm -hmm. I said, man, I got it through the county because, see, the county uh, gives inf information to people like myself because, see, not everybody knows what to do when they inherit a property. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes people inherit a property that is not in the best condition. Yeah. And so there have been a lot of people who have been stuck in tax court because literally they end up inheriting a property they don't know what to do with they don't they don't think it could be sold because of its condition and then they fall behind on paying taxes on something they, they could never afford to begin with because it was something they inherited and so then they found themselves in tax court in a situation that they they should have never been in to begin with mm -hmm. but had they had somebody that reached out to them with the information and the knowledge on how to go through that situation they would have never been in it in the beginning so i'm here to do that for you right. to see if you guys need any help with anything and if you do let me be the first person you call mm -hmm. not the last person right. and so yeah, now that's what i'm going through right now with this lady she uh 12 of her siblings uh her both of her parents died uh some of her siblings died and all of covid this year and i called her and i was like i just didn't know what the fuck to say i was like uh <laughs> Uh, you know, I just like stumbled over my words. I was like, my condolences. I'm so sorry. Like, I can't imagine what you're going through. COVID's been affecting everybody. You know, um, give me a call back whenever you're ready to handle things. I understand that you you're handling affairs right now, but I'm just a phone call away if you have any questions or if you need anything. You know, I just kind of left it at that. I've been reluctant to give her a call back because I'm like, fuck. How the hell do I handle the situation? Twelve people just died. That's twelve houses, by the way. But that's a really sensitive situation. You are. <clears throat> An investor. Mm -hmm. Part of that is you, again, the service that we provide to the community. Hey, listen, I want you to know first and foremost, this ain't about making a buck or nothing. I've just seen too many people get drowned in a situation that they don't know how to handle. Right. That's why my company's here to provide a service for you. My condolences on your situation. Uh, it, I, I cannot even begin to imagine what you're feeling or what you're going through. But know that if you're worried about how to handle things with these properties, me and my team, even our attorneys, are at your disposal to be able to help you, okay? I don't want you to fall behind. It's the, it's the end of the year. Property taxes just got put out in October. I don't want all that to mount up on you because even though all this just happened, it doesn't stop the clock from the money running with the city or the state. And so I wanna help you navigate this and get this paid, if that's what you wanna do, or if you if you wanna see what you can sell, what you can offer, hey, look, I can buy everything off of you. And if I can't buy it, or if it may not be something I wanna buy, 
I can get it sold for you and at no cost to you. When I tell you I'm providing a service to you, I'm providing a service to you that's not going to cost you a dime. Okay? I like that. I'm going Provide the service. That's it. Provide the service. <laughs> this is when I'm actually, <laughs> this, is, this is when I've dealt with, I was talking with Q about today. My house is unique. It's the biggest house in the neighborhood. <laughs> and we're in the projects on the south side. <laughs> mm, dang. Again, you got me. Put that money in the jar. <laughs> uh, that's how it be too. Uh, La just last week, I believe, there's a house next to Monterey Park. Nice, big, two-story. Um, doesn't need that much repairs, just probably foundation and cosmetics. And uh, he has two extra lots on the side next to him. Two big lots. And just he was just asking too much for it. Just it was in a bad neighborhood. If you drop a million dollar house in the worst neighborhood on the block, it's no longer worth a million dollars. Just because you got the biggest and best on the block doesn't mean it's worth more than everybody else's property, you know? True. Here's how you deal with that objection. It's the facts, okay? Hey, you can have the biggest house in the projects. But guess what? Men lie, women lie, but numbers don't lie. Would you agree? I agree. Okay, so here are the numbers. In your neighborhood, these are the houses, right? And then there's your house. Your house has nothing that we can compare it to. It's the anomaly that does not necessarily give it immense value. Because if your house is the one house that's different from everybody else's, right? Then how, then you're, you're basically a standalone. There's nothing I can compare you to. So then now let's look at the actual value of the house. Cause now you're looking at what value does this house provide? Meaning, okay, it's the bigger house. Are there more rooms? Are there bathrooms? Because you can have the biggest house in the neighborhood. The house I went to go see a couple days ago, nine bedrooms, two kitchens, but it only had two bathrooms. 4,000 plus square feet. Is it on uh, uh, fucking, on the south side over there on Burn? It sure is. Is it 618 Burn? It sure is. They're, they're, get that shit, bro, because I had that shit under contract not too long ago. <laughs> it's, a, it's not working. It's not, bro. There's nothing to compare it to. They, 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 they got living windows in the living room and shit, bro. It's, it's not even about it's nothing compared to. It's yeah. a permit nightmare. Yeah, dude. Those okay. stairs are illegal. Yeah. The minute you go in there, those the, 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 water, the damage, like, water damage, like they they had some permitted work, and then they had Primo who had a license do the work, but yeah. that don't mean it was permitted. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, <laughs> that's the thing. You have to hit people with the facts. Hey, men lie, women lie, but numbers don't lie. All right. All right? That's that's my line I've been using. You guys are free to use it. It's not trademarked yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. But when you're dealing with an, anom an anomaly like that, guys, you just have to state the facts to them. Hey, if it's permitted, great. But if you got a 4,000 square foot house in a neighborhood where the biggest house is 1,500 square feet, you're not going to get a million dollars for it. There's tons of them on the south side. I think they're all cartel. <laughs> There's some mansions down on the south side, bro. You go off of 36th Street and you'll see like a 5,000 square foot mansion in the middle of the projects. Seriously. But that mansion is not worth what that same size house will be in the Dominion. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what you have to point out. Hey, that's great. Your house is the biggest house in the neighborhood. Unfortunately, your house ain't going to get what it's worth in the neighborhood next door because it's not in the neighborhood next door. Your neighborhood only has 1,500 square foot houses. So you did a whole lot. And it's yeah, it's added value, but it's not quite as much as you think. And that's why you've been on the market so long, or that's why you've been trying to sell for so long and nobody's giving you what you want. So now let's, let's, let's get realistic expectations and realistic numbers. I'm gonna show you the comps in your neighborhood. And based off the comps in your neighborhood, what price per square foot would be on your house. That might be the only additional money that you can pull based on actual numbers, all right? All right.
Now this is a tough one. This one you're gonna have to freestyle a little bit, right? But this is gonna, this is more like, uh, I, 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 we're calling a pre-foreclosure list, okay? So I'm, I'm, I'm off a pre-foreclosure list. What makes you think my house is for sale? Well, you know, I'm really just reaching out in the neighborhood. Uh, I was driving around. I'm also reaching out to a couple of your neighbors. Um, but I mean, I I'm interested, man. Um, you know, I can help you out with, with selling it. I don't know what you're thinking, what the situation is. Uh, do you owe anything on the property or what's going on? Do I owe anything on the property? I mean, I don't think that's really any of your business. I got you, I got you. Well, I mean, if I'm just reaching out to see if you're behind, you know, see what's going on. If I can help you out, put some money in your pocket, get you out of a certain situation. All right, you're tiptoeing. Stop being scared. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you guys something, man. Don't be scared to tell these people, hey, look, we pulled up, we pulled up the county information, right? And we're out here trying to help people that are behind on their taxes or behind on their mortgage. And you came up on our list as being behind. And if, if you got it on in front of you, quote the exact amount. Mm -hmm. Look, I'm not a bill collector. I'm not a debt collector. I'm out here trying to help people. I understand that you're in debt. And I understand you're probably getting bombarded by tons of people. And none of them are actually really trying to help you. They're trying to help themselves. I'm trying to help you. You're, you're, you're behind. Have you looked into, you know, uh, 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 loan forgiveness? Have you looked into putting it on the back end? Do you even know about that? Do you know about any of the programs that are out here? Now, have you been through all that and been shut down? And if so, are you just sitting there waiting for them to come and knock it down, for, knock, uh, kick you out? Like, don't be afraid to address the elephant in the room because oftentimes when you do, it humbles the person on the other line. It's one of two reactions. Either they're going to hang up because they're butt hurt because somebody knows their business or it's going to humble them and they're going to and they're going to seek your help. Because you're actually taking the time to, to not just shit in their face, you know what I'm saying? Throw, throw their dirty laundry in their face, but you're taking the time to say, hey, look, I'm going to help you pick this up. Okay? I can help you. But in order for me to help you, we gotta talk real. Yeah. So here's the real, you're behind 14,000, and I know it. Now, have you looked at any of the programs? Do you know about it? If you have and you do, do you know that we might be able to give you a cash offer where you can walk away with some money in your pocket and this will fix your credit, okay? You'll, you'll walk away with the house having been paid, which is definitely gonna be a boost for you, and you walk away with money in hand. Address the elephant in the room. Like that. mm, that's too easy for you, Joey. <laughs> He's the youngest in the room, right? That's good. Savage, bro. Mm -hmm. the youngest in the room, and I and I and I and I literally have to go through here and like, you know what? No, nah, that's too easy for him. <laughs> Okay. Joey, the house is across the street sold for double what you're offering me. Okay, okay, I understand. Well, I mean, look at the houses across the street. Some of them are new builds. Some of them were built within the last five to three years. Your house was built in the 90s. I mean, that does a deficit to the amount. Okay, but my house is bigger than that house. Okay, okay, I understand. But, I mean, still, a new build is going to go for worth more than what a house back then was built worth. I mean, it's used newer materials. It's up to 2021 standards now. I still have to bring your house up to what that house is worth. Yeah, so when you do, I mean, isn't it going to be worth more because it's bigger? Well, it's, I mean, you know, houses do go up in value, of course, but it's still going to retain the same value from when it was built. I mean, maybe a little more on top, but it's still nowhere near as much as these new builds. Man, Joe, I think you're just one of these young guys trying to keep all the money to yourself, man. Come on, man. I know you can play better. You could, you could, you could, you could give me a better offer, man. I mean, if you like, you can, you can look up on the county yourself. You can see what the property's assessed at compared to these newer houses. I mean, it's always going to be a bigger difference. These newer builds are going for a lot more. Not bad. Not bad. Now, how do you, where do you start to turn it to where you're making that where the offer now they're no longer worried about that offer but it's like okay we're gonna take your offer that's what I so it, sorry it's not slowing down my brain enough <laughs> uh, you're going along the right path right but now it's 
you want to take the focus off that other house, right? Yeah. So you have to focus on the present house, which I know there wasn't enough information for you to do that, you know what I mean? Because we're kind of freestyling. But you want to get them like, all right, so the other house, oh, the other house, you know, they got more money. You were going right with painting the picture of the reality, like, hey, well, your house is different, the house is newer. That that was perfect. Always like, a lot of people steer away from that. Like, they're scared to give the cold, hard facts. Mm -hmm. Man, look, the house across the street got more money. Yeah, yeah, it did. You know why, Bob, also? Because it's also 1,500 square feet bigger than yours. You know, stuff like that. Yeah. We, we, we deal with that, you know? Mm -hmm. People often, oh, the house, you know, the house down the street got way more money. Yeah. Yeah, did you see the finishes in that house? Mm -hmm. Did you see that standalone porcelain tub in the middle of the room in the bathroom? Do you have that? Do you have granite countertops? Mm -hmm. Wait. Are your appliances even from this decade? You know, sometimes you have to ask those hard questions, you know, or, or you have to make those hard statements. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, yeah, you're right. They did get, you know, they, they got offered a whole lot more money. Um, and this is what I've done. I've actually said, hey, can we meet up? And the son, yeah, we can meet up. Yeah, and I pull out my computer. Yeah, this is why, okay? See these pictures? Does this look like your house? Look at this kitchen. Your kitchen anywhere near that? That's why, you know? And, and it's like, oh, okay. shit, okay. It's reality. You, when you confront people with the reality of the situation, they have no choice. Either they either they acknowledge it and accept it, or you do have a few that go off in fantasy land. Mm -hmm. And like, well, I, I just have to have it. Like I literally had a guy, I've been calling him for like eight months, mm -hmm. and he is so in fantasy land. It's mm -hmm. ridiculous. Even, and, and the crazy thing is, uh, things in his area it have happened where it's actually knocked down the value. Okay. Now he's getting offered less and less each day. He's like, oh, I'm gonna wait for it to turn around. You do that, buddy. I yeah. couple years, but <laughs> you got like 60 days before you get foreclosed, but sure thing. See it where it has All right, uh, last round. Hmm. This will test your skills, Luis. I know Quentin's policy on this. <laughs> I want at least 5,000 in earnest money. I see, I see. Well, I mean, standard is 1%. I mean, why, why, what makes you think that you can get 5000 down? I get 5000 down because I, the person who's going to buy my house is going to be serious enough where they'll put 5000 down. I mean, how do you know I'm not serious? I'm calling you for a reason. I'm not wasting my time on, you know, on any phone call. Unless you're giving me what I want, you're wasting my time. I want 5000 down. $5,000 is what's going to make me feel secure that you're going to be able to execute. All right, all right. So, I mean, you're worried about the down payment. I mean, I'm giving you the price that you want. The down payment's only going to go towards the end. So what's the difference whether I put ten dollars or five thousand? You're going to get it all at the end anyways, whether you get it now or not. Well, because see, if you put ten dollars down, right, then if you don't close on time, I get ten dollars. But see, if you don't close on time with five thousand dollars, I get five thousand. I feel like you're more inclined to not want to lose five thousand dollars. All right. I mean, you're right on that. You're right on that. But. Like I said, 5000 is just too much. If you're not serious about selling, you know, you're going to get the amount that you want. I'm serious about closing. I'm not, like I said, I'm not wasting my time on this phone call for nothing. I'm serious about buying this house. I'm going to put a decent amount of money down. Like I said, 1% is standard. I'm not going to go above that just because you want that. So, I mean, if you're serious about selling, I'm serious about going and putting this on paper, putting that deposit into the title and getting the title work done right now. Not bad. Here's what, here's what I would have done different. I'm conveying to you my insecurities in you, right? Your Infinity Cash offer. You've closed hundreds of fucking deals. Does anybody know how to leverage that to your advantage? Yeah. Call oh. the title company, tell them to verify for us. My man Joey. Bingo. <laughs> Someone's sitting there telling you they're worried about money, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, you worried about me closing? Here's what I want you to do. The contract that I prepared for you, that you agreed on price, the escrow agent down at the bottom, my escrow agent is D.D. Jackson, so that's how I'm gonna say, is D.D. Jackson. Why don't you give D.D. a call, ask her about me and my company and how many deals I've done, right? And how many, how many people I've left hanging versus how many people I've executed contracts with and then give me a call back. You call my escrow agent, she's gonna tell you, man, he closes. <laughs> Point blank period. He closes. And there's your surety. 
So now let's get off this 5,000 and do what the standard is, the 1%. Yeah. But again, it's, I'm a boss. Yeah. I'm taking the position of a boss. You, you, you questioning my integrity. You, you, you questioning my integrity and you trying to tax my wallet. It ain't that I ain't got it. It's that I sh I'm not, I'm not going to allow myself to be taxed. I feel like I'm getting pumped down. Regardless if the money is going to the to the to the uh, overall price, because technically, as the buyer, you know what I mean. One argument that I could have easily made to you is, well, the f the five thousand shouldn't mean nothing because it's going to count towards the price. That's less money that you got to wire at the end of the day. But see, then I would have, like I said, I would have flipped and said, yeah, but uh, no, nah, I only do one percent. But here's what you can do: since you doubt my ability to close, call Dee Dee Jackson over at Alamo at the Colonnade. She can tell you how many deals I've closed this month, let alone this year and how many people have been left hanging versus how many people I've executed. The number on hanging is zero. If I do the contract and I turn in that title and I put earnest money down, we're closing. Point blank, period. So I'll give them a call so that way they can take care of your insecurities and we can do business. Would it have been a, a good to say, uh, if I put the $5,000 down and there's title issues as far as, you know, things that are obstacles with this closing, then I'm losing that $5,000 is that, would that have been a good way to go also or not? Uh, type of issues? Not really. At the end of the day, we're trying to avoid putting down so much money because it's just a waste of liquid. You know what I mean? But the liquid is used to help secure an insecure seller's, you know, uh, issues. Yeah. But you, you got to understand something, man. We, this, this is, this is, follow me. This, this is the mindset. All bullshit aside. This was mine. This was in my office. Quentin bought this for me, right? And this is a, this is the mindset. I don't give a fuck. Fuck what you're thinking. I'm a boss. I'm closing. Don't sit here and tell me you doubt me and you and more money is gonna help you feel better. I'm already buying the house for however many hundred thousand dollars, right? I'm already buying the house. We're already doing a contract. A contract that's legally binding for me, right? You're worried about me closing, so you feel I should put more down here. Talk 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 to the people who are gonna close us who can tell you about me and what, what I've done or what we've done. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Leverage the fact that Quentin has been doing this for over five years, eight. right? Yeah. Eight, eight years. Leverage that fact. Leverage the fact that Infinity Cash Offer has been around for four years now and has closed with every damn title company in San Antonio. Leverage that. You leverage the, you guys gotta stop thinking of you. No offense, but if you're thinking of you, you are a fucking peon on the cog. All of us are. Mm -hmm. It's not, it, it's, it's this. This is the big, the big wheel. Even Q. Q is just, all of us as individuals, we are just a small piece on the, on the wheel, right? This, the business, the company is the wheel. This is the shit. You, you see what I'm saying? So you have to leverage that. At the end of the day, it's Infinity that has done hundreds of deals. Leverage that. It's Infinity that has millions in closing, closed transactions. Leverage that. Know that. And let it fill you so you walk around with more confidence and feel more confidence so that you can talk to these people. Because the biggest thing is to convey the confidence. Man, I talk so much shit to people. Because standing in these shoes, I can. Why can't you? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Use it to your ability. Have have the mentality that they can't hurt you and and fuck them and go at it. But don't don't always be soft spoken. Don't always be you know feel like you have to have a, a meek or meager personality with them. No, you're a fucking boss. You're talking to them about buying their hundred thousand dollar property. $100,000 is a lot of money to people. Not everybody can afford a $100,000 home. The fact that you can buy one cash says something. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you got me confused. I'm calling you to buy your house cash. I'm not looking for a lender. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, you're excused. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. Questions? I'll do y'all one. Think of an objection in your mind. 
one that has given you the most trouble. Everybody got one? Who's got one? Who's got an objection that they've struggled with? Or been confronted with? Or maybe an objection that you'd like another perspective on? Maybe another, another, another way to reply on? When people tell me what the properties assess the, the BCAT value, they always say like it's like 180 and my offer is like 90. And they're like, my property's valued at one.